Good morning. Happy Thursday, PSW staff, clients, and friends yeah. joining us. Your film scoring results are in for Yellowstone. Great job. We're going to see that tomorrow. But today, we're going to go back to the time you love, I love. Uh, this is this is pure elegance. We're going to go back to 1921 when it opened at the Ambassador Hotel, and we're going to revisit beautiful Coconut Grove. <laughs> Coconut Grove was a supper club where the rich and famous dined in, in Hollywood. And it's a nightclub on the, that share, but shared. It, both of them aren't there anymore. The same lot as the Ambassador Hotel. So it was, so you'd stay at this very nice hotel. Then you'd go over to the nightclub for dinner and drinks and dancing. And so this opens in 1921. And the, uh, I kind of want to focus on the nightclub and in particular, some some history was made of this nightclub concerning um, African Americans and uh, and women that we'll we'll talk about. Um, but first, let, let's just let's just look a little bit about this. Look a little deeper into this hotel. So the architect is Myron Hunt. Myron Hunt is interesting because um, his firm they they build a lot of famous places in Los Angeles. They they build the Huntington Library, uh, the Pasadena Rose Bowl, and then this beautiful Ambassador Hotel in 1921. And the Ambassador had a thousand rooms, and then it had bungalows where F. Scott Fitzgerald lived for a little bit. It had this grand lobby with this Italian fireplace and these crystal chandeliers and just everything was luxurious and and beautiful. Um, my parents took me to the swimming pool there quite a bit. I don't really remember it. I was pretty young, but um, so I was on the grounds at some point, but you know, it's not about me. But uh, okay, so the Coconut Grove, it opens up three months after the ambassador opens up. And if we look at just the year 1921, let's just take a look historically what's going on. 1921 is the year that the U.S. ends the war, World War I. So we've been at war for years, and so this is that same year. Okay, what else is going on? Prohibition's still going on. It's really the beginning of Prohibition, I mean, you know, uh, the first few years of it. But, you know, that doesn't stop the Coconut Grove from serving alcohol. So, of course, they, they continue to serve it. So just to paint a picture of, of the, the atmosphere, and there's way too many celebrities and, and people to mention, but I mean, you know, you had Salvador Dali there, you had Winston Churchill there, Amelia Earhart was there, every U.S. president from Herbert Hoover to Nixon stayed there. I mean, everybody was, so you'd stay in this beautiful hotel, you'd go to the pool, and and of course Marilyn Monroe got her mo start there as a model at the pool with the agency, the Blue Book Models. So you see her at the pool. You go home and change, you get dressed up, cocktail hour, you go to the Coconut Grove, you see Frank Sinatra, you dance, you know, and that's probably like a Monday night or something. And several people are discovered there at the Coconut Grove. Joan Crawford's discovered there. Uh, Carol Lombard is there, is discovered there. Loretta Young is discovered there. Um, and then our friend Bing Crosby gets his start there as a real singer, crooner. Um, and we talked about Bing Crosby months ago when he was discovered in downtown Los Angeles. So he starts performing there. Sammy Davis Jr. records a live album there. Judy Garland gets a, her comeback there. The first Academy Awards where they where they give that famous statue uh, was held at the Coconut Grove in 1930. And uh, it was also the, the home of the first Golden Globe Awards. And if we look at the, the just the inside of the Coconut Grove, it's had this Moorish style and palm trees. And, um, and the ceiling was painted this midnight blue with these sparkling stars to make it look like it was outside. So it was very romantic. And history was made in this room. 
And if, if we go to the year 1939, that's a year we've talked about. What happened in 39? Two of the biggest movies came out the same year and were up for the same Oscars. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, which you guys scored the scene to a few weeks ago, and Gone with the Wind. Both of these movies are 1939, and both of these movies are directed by the same director, Victor Fleming. So it worked out well for him that year, you know? And what happens at these awards, so Bob Hope is hosting this award ceremony, and I love Bob Hope, so hilarious. Uh, and he's hosting it, and uh, Hattie McDaniel makes history here by being the first black woman to get an Oscar. Um, of course, you know, because it was stupid back then, um, it was segregated, so the, the Coconut Grove didn't allow blacks there, but David L. Selznick made some calls and connections and got, got her a table, uh, not at that table, but a separate table over there, and it's, you know, um, these were the times, but she actually did win the Oscar. Super talented. Um, the youngest of 13 kids, and her parents were um, uh, former slave slaves. Um, and from Kansas City, she's the first black woman to be on the radio in history. She's a songwriter. She was in over 300 movies. I mean, just a very influential, talented uh, lady. And Clark Gable was a big proponent of hers. I, he really wanted her to get the part and um, boycotted one of the screenings in Georgia if she wasn't allowed to come and would go to her parties consistently throughout you know, her, their time in Hollywood together. And another black woman did not win an Oscar until 50 years later with Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost. So Hattie McDaniel really created history with, um, with doing that. So being the first black person and also the first woman and then uh, in terms of a woman 1964 Barbara Streisand makes her first Los Angeles appearance at the Coconut Grove so a lot of things were happening for you know minorities in a sense and we can't mention the ambassador without the you know terrible story of Bobby Kennedy's assassination and that's in 1968 uh, and that, you know, shocked the nation, still sh is the nation's in shock. I mean, I can't believe that. Uh, Sirhan Sirhan assassinates him after eating at the HMS Bounty across the street, which, uh, you know, that's that's my favorite bar restaurant, the HMS Bounty, love that place. But yeah, he, he orders food and then goes across the street and, and, and assassinates him. Um, there's gotta be some conspiracy there, right? But, um, and unfortunately, in 1989, you know, the ambassador closes and um, there's a school there right now. And it's a school that I used to teach at and it's lovely teachers and great campus. It's huge. And um, but I just think it's it's good for us to go back in time and see what life was like. And, you know, yes, there was glamour and beauty. There was also some a lot of inequalities, too. You know, we looked at the Whiskey A Go-Go a few weeks ago, and we looked at just the culture and the times that were going on, particularly in the late 60s with the Civil Rights Movement. And, you know, for LA to be such an important metropolis city that, um, you know, things were happening here, the things that we talk about every day still in our in our conversations. So it's too bad it closed down in 1989, was, was after 68 years of doing you know just sheer elegance this is what this was when la especially koreatown before it was called koreatown this was this was just the the you know place to be if you were a movie star if you were drinks in hollywood and all this kind of you know elegance uh great part of la history to talk about and you know we did a class on the ambassador so maybe we'll relook at that but maybe another time okay so i hope you enjoyed coconut grove that's it tomorrow film scoring results Sorry, TV scoring results. Um, have a great rest of the day. And see you tomorrow. Bye.